Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. Today is the 12th of February, meaning that it is the Chinese New Year and that we are also now officially in the Year of the Ox. What does that have to do with Gundam, you might ask? Well, everything. Two years ago, Kunio Okawada started drawing Gundams inspired by the Chinese Zodiac, so this year we got an Ox-inspired RX-78 too. Now, I'm not gonna lie, at first I was completely unaware of this yearly Zodiac thing that Okawada Sensei was drawing, so when I first saw this amazing picture, I thought it was like a G Gundam MSV or something, because, you know, G Gundam has some pretty wild designs and, I mean, wouldn't have been surprised if this actually was from G Gundam. Anyways, it's pretty interesting with some pretty cool attention like the hoofed feet and then like the whole torso that's redesigned to look like an ox. Also, there's no armaments list given, so we can interpret them the way we want them to. Like the tail thingy, which I'm going to interpret as a beam rifle, and I really want to think of those horns as like incoms or funnels. Um, in unrelated but equally quite wild news, uh, the first promotional campaign for the new Gundam arcade game Arsenal Base has been announced. At stores that sell Tri-H cards, they will be distributing a promotional booklet as well as a promotional card of all things of the H1 normal. Now, I can understand why they would do that, but at the same time, I would have expected them to go with one of their more flagship mobile suits, like everyone's favorite Unicorn Gundam, or like the Strike Gundam, which was present on the first promotional picture. Um, they also announced that there will be more promotional events coming in the future, and that in early March they will announce more details about the game. This week we also got a little bit more information on the real experience model Unicorn Gundam, because judging from the comments on my previous video, Everyone really wants more unicorns. Uh, the PE Bandai reservations will open on the 3rd of March, and that is also when we will get more information about this bust. Other than that, the whole article can basically be summed up by it transforms by itself, and there will be sound playing, and there will also be light while it does so. Um, currently, there is no price listed, but I'm sure it'll cost you a pretty penny. Just as these amazing IC cards will, um, at 12,100 yen, 120 buckaroos, this is definitely one of the more expensive ways of carrying around your Pasmo or your Suica card when you're finally able to go to Japan again. <laughs> but I cannot deny that they are super cool. Uh, not only is the design awesome, but they also have LED lights in there that will activate when you activate the card, as you can see in this promotional video right here. Now, as cool as your IC card holder might be, I would definitely not recommend you to use it and admire the special effect during the Tokyo Rush Hour you're going to get a lot of angry stares while doing so. Now, as much as I want it, um, the sad truth is I probably wouldn't use it because it's just so much more convenient to have it either in your wallet or have it between your smartphone and your smartphone case. So you can just take those out easily, put them on a machine and make your way through the gate. But for the people who really want one, I will have a link down below because they're being sold through Moeco, which does seem to be accepting international orders, so you can get one right now. Also, for the iPhone users, you can also get these as pretty expensive iPhone cases. Um, for the iPhone 12, iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max, the case will be 17,600 yen, or for the iPhone 12 mini, it'll be 16,500 yen. Yeesh. Um, but hey, at the very least, there will still be one LED on your case, um, which apparently lights up randomly when there's enough radio waves being transmitted by your phone and the store page actually tells you that if you want to like see them in action if you want to see the led in action guaranteed use google maps um more things you can order right now then is the acrylic endless waltz logo which will no doubt go 
fantastic with the Master Great Wing Gundam Zero Endless Waltz version, Virgin Katoki, and alongside this, the normal Gundam Wing display logo and 2 Mix 25th Anniversary also got a second rank of orders. The large Endless Waltz and 2 Mix logos go for 1,620 yen, and the small Endless Waltz and Gundam Wing logo go for 1,320 yen, and all of them are scheduled for an April release. And if you still don't have enough acrylic stuff in your life, on the 8th, P Bandai started accepting pre-orders for these SD Gundam acrylic keychains. And I gotta say, they do have a very cool, like, retro gamey design to them. And they will ship sometime in March and will set you back 880 yen a piece. On to the things you can buy right now then, and this week there wasn't a whole lot to buy if we're excluding the apparel. Um, there was the 2 Mix 25th Anniversary All-Time Best CD on the 10th, but soon after I reported on it, like, all of the pre-orders were filled, so... Getting that might be a bit difficult, um, although Amazon is trying to get more stock of the regular releases. Two days earlier then, Hobbling Japan. Two days earlier then, Hobby Japan published a book titled Gampra wo zettai ni umakunaru ju no seisaku techniku or 10 building techniques that will absolutely, definitely improve your gumpla. For this edition, they've gathered 10 professional gumpla builders, so I'm assuming every one of them will explain one technique. And as you can see on the cover, they will be explaining it on the entry grade RX-78 2. Also, even if you can't speak Japanese, I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of pictures clearly illustrating what to do. And there is also a special slide of water slide decals included, still making it worth your while. Granted, it does cost you 1350 yen without tax, which might be a bit expensive if you just want those water slides. But let's face it, we've all made worse purchasing decisions in the past. Throughout this week then, we also got some new Gashapon releases. For 300 yen a spin, there is the Gashapon Senshi Forte 13, with its lineup consisting of the Wing Gundam Zero Endless Waltz, Dead Scythe Hell Endless Waltz, Serpent with Double Gatling Gun, Serpent with Bazooka, an option part set, and... the Gun Tank. Because... I've definitely noticed that with those Gashapon machines, including like a random out of place mobile suit within like a very much themed set is quite a thing that they've been doing. Not that that's a problem for me because knowing my luck, I would probably get the option set anyways. Just wanted to get a Hazel, but I kept getting the upgrade parts that I couldn't use because I didn't have a Hazel. For 500 yen a spin then, there is the Ultimate Luminous Gundam 2 collection, and the lineup is the RX-78-1 Prototype Gundam, the RX-78-2 Normal Gundam, the RX-78-3 G3 Gundam, Structure A with Luminous Unit, and Structure B with Luminous Unit. And as you've probably guessed from the name, by combining the Gundams with the Luminous Units, you can get Light Up Eyes and also Light Up Vents. It's a good thing that I'm not 100% sold on the design of the Gundams, because otherwise I probably would have emptied out any machine I encountered. And talking about emptying out your wallets, let's have a look at this week's Gundam apparel, because they just keep pumping that stuff out like no tomorrow. On the fifth sale started for Strict G's Gundam Seed collection and will feature a long sleeve t-shirt with either an Omni or a Zaf theme for 5,280 yen, a hoodie with Kira and Strike or Atherin and Aegis theme for 8,580 yen, a Fluffy Haro pouch for 2,200 yen, a Fluffy Haro keychain for 1,320 yen, or a pin that you can attach to your recently purchased Gundam apparel for 880 yen a piece. And if Seed isn't really your thing, G Strict also released some really cool record inspired t shirts, appropriately called the Gundam Records t shirt collection. For 5,280 yen, you can get a 0083 Rikan Gista in G or Turn A t shirt, each available in black and white. I think they really missed the opportunity here to make a t-shirt based on a certain Gundam anime where the music is very much in the forefront. But hey, maybe down the line we will get ourselves a record-inspired Thunderbolt t-shirt. 
Over at Bonkoreden in March, we're getting some pretty sweet looking tricolor 0083 and 08 MS team designs. And of course, they're putting them on literally everything they can. Um, there's going to be t-shirts, toad backs, acrylic charms, mini towels, a muffler towel so you can cheer Gato on when he nukes Solomon, um, and also a towel. And because they could, there is also a collaboration with Robot for Geeks to produce Gundam X Hello Kitty clothing, and those are being shipped overseas through Zen Market. The goal of this amazing collaboration is to bring geeks and fashion closer together. Now, I might not be the most fashionable guy around, but I mean, looking at these designs, I'm not sure how well all of these would go over in public. Regardless, there's also a slightly more conservative looking t-shirt, coat, long sleeve shirt, hoodie, trucker jacket, another jacket, track pants, more t-shirts followed by more t-shirts. This abomination that I just showed for 6,600 yen, again that's around 60 to 70 dollars, um, an eco bag and a toad bag. Woof, okay so if you want something that is actually pretty fashionable, there is this very fancy Char Custom Faux leather bag. It ships in March and will cost you a neat 15,400 yen, but at the very least it is at least three times more fancy than the rest of the things we just had a look at. And before we move on to today's final topic, I have to tell you about Mika Akitaka's newest Gundam Girl. This time it is based on the Zakuto, so it's the Zakuto girl, and to be honest, it reminds me more of Curlia the Pokemon as opposed to a Zaku inspired mobile suit. Anyways, moving along. This week there unfortunately wasn't any interesting Gundam poll news, but the Gundam Cafe gave me something good to end on after all. A while back I reported on the Gundam Seed Valentine event and here the whole gimmick is kinda you can pretend to be dating one of the five original Gundam pilots by purchasing stuff and eating things. Um, it also had the amazing subtitle of Cosmic Era 69 version. Subtle. Putting that aside for now, Anyone familiar with uh, Japanese Valentine's traditions is probably aware that in order to maximize Valentine's sales, uh, Japan also has an extra Valentine's Day called White Day. And appropriately, there is also a separate event for that too with the same five seed boys. The event will start on February the 15th, right after the Valentine's Day event ends, and will end itself on March the 14th, White Day itself. Now, in real life, the difference between Valentine's Day and White Day is that on Valentine's Day, it's the women that give the men something, and then on White Day, the men give something back to the women that gave them something for Valentine's Day. And Traditionally, this had to be two to three times the value of the gift that they received. The difference between the events at the Gundam Cafe, though, is simply that the menu got changed and that there are now different things for you to buy. There's also a dessert with a limited edition mug included, and even though I know that it's the White Day, like it's White Day inspired, I can't help but get a Christmas vibe from it. Also, something I missed last week was that the Gundam Cafe got their second wave of original design mouth masks in. Uh, they will set you back 825 yen and there are 11 designs including Zeon, Neo Zeon, Tekadon Kaki, Tekadon Black, Titans, Ryusei Go, King of Hearts, Galarhorn, Trans Am, New Gundam and Haro Pink. Of course, I would totally get the Titans one if I could. But that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.